Hey everyone, welcome to Steven Inks. Today we are looking at a very cheap pen. Um, I bought this pen on Amazon for about $5. It is not a fountain pen. It is a uh, technical pen. I believe it is technically a rollerball. You see what I did there? Um, it is the Pilot V Tech Point uh, 5 that this particular pen, there are several incarnations of it, but there, this particular one takes Pilot ink cartridges. Uh, so that's interesting. And for that reason, it checks a couple of boxes for things that I like about fountain pens. So I'm gonna treat it like a fountain pen. I'm gonna draw with it. I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna look at the parts and features and we are starting right now. Here's an up close of the pen. It says, Pilot V5, high tech point 0 0.5 cartridge system. Now there's two versions of this pen as far as I understand. And one of them is not the cartridge uh, system and the other one is. So you'll have to look carefully to make sure you get this exact one. Um, taking off the cap, it is a like a cheap plastic pen. You can tell. Um, that it was made to look like, kind of modeled after possibly disposable pens. But the cool thing here is what's underneath this body. But let's just look at the parts here. We've got this very tiny roller ball or technical pen um, thing, but I do believe it is a ball. We can take a look at that a little bit closer, maybe at another time. Um, but it has this kind of section that almost looks like the section of like um, the Urban, the Gerban uh, rollerball that I reviewed a while back, or even possibly a Platinum Preppy. Um, and when you unscrew the body, if you're a Pilot fan, this should look very familiar. Um, I find it odd that this pen shipped with a cartridge installed in it, which is a huge fountain pen no-no, but maybe if you are a rollerball person, you know different from me. And it's like perfectly normal to ship a cartridge attached to and fully plugged in. Um, are you a rollerball person? Tell me all your secrets. Uh, tell me about this cartridge. But this is definitely a pilot proprietary cartridge. I've been using this for a while, so you can see that some of the ink is gone. Um, and let's hope I don't spill all over my desk. I brought with me a Pilot Con 40 just to confirm that in fact, fits like a glove. All right, so I don't imagine that you would be able to fill this pen um, by submersing it in ink like you would a normal fountain pen, but let me just take that off. I'll have to clean that out later. Um, I could imagine that what I would do, or what I will do when I eventually refill this pen with something else, is I'll just uh, fill it from the from the converter by putting the converter directly into the ink, and then attaching it like before. So um, no harm, no foul. Uh, there we go. Let's um, let's do some test lines. Before we start with the uh, test lines, I promised you guys an up close look at this pen, and I does what I says. Let's see if we can get some up close looks at the nib, just to see what we've got going on here. And it's going to take me a second. All right, what I'm seeing. is, looks like a little bit of dust on the uh, lens there. Maybe that's on the tip. Clean that off. Yeah, so what I think we're looking at is a very small ball in the tip of the Okay, and a little tiny breather hole. 
Interesting. So um, that's what's going on inside of this guy. But let's, excuse me, just dropped my thing. This is high quality content right here. Uh, let's see how it writes. Um, let's start with some regular old lines. It picks up nice and easy. Um, I do, it's a, it's a thicker line, like maybe on par with a fountain pen fine. But very nice, very pleasant to draw with. I'm going to just draw a big old circle. We'll do it with a bunch of different directions here because then we can get kind of that weird, interesting textured thing. How do you do the textured thing? Do you guys like the textured thing? I don't know. Sometimes I just want it to be a little circle and I don't care about the texture thing. Sometimes I'm a little bit impatient when I'm putting some texture on a thing. I can't time lapse this, guys. This is what it's really like when I'm drawing. This is actually way faster than how I draw because I'm always a little bit scared when I do a new drawing. So this is me throwing off my fear and saying, hey, nobody, nobody cares about this part. Right? Everyone's shaking their head no. I can see you. I can see you through the camera. That's right. Anyway, um, so I definitely see some potential here. The nib certainly keeps up. And I do, just like the, the Jeroban rollerball, I hear a slight rattling sound. I don't know if you guys hear that, but I do. And it's kind of funny. It doesn't affect the pen at all, but it's there. Okay. Very interesting. Um, so here's my art advice before we get started. And this is most people, should be an L, oops, look to the area with the most contrast. It's just something when you're plotting out what a drawing should look like. Um, and like, let me show you what I mean. Here's two boxes and there's boxes inside the boxes. Now um, you might say, oh, not me. I feel differently about this. Then that's fine. Uh, but most people, if I give you this black box, and this black box. But then I do some hatching over this one. If you were to look away and then look right back, uh, most people, their eye would go to this box first because we have a white area surrounded by a black area as opposed to a black area surrounded by this kind of hatched area, which from a distance might look gray or might look like a half tone between black and white. Because stark black and stark white are the highest contrast, you would want to use them as the central focus point of your, um, of your composition. Like for example, if you were doing a little house, you got a little chimney stack here. Um, and then you've got all these areas like these windows. Uh, 
Um, and you just kind of want a little patio. Um, get some trees in the back. I gotta stop uh, drawing this. Um, if I took one of these windows and blacked it out, I'm creating a contrast that draws the eye in and I want people to look at that window. And the opposite would be true if it was nighttime and there was all kinds of shadow on this house. Which means it's very dark. But one house, there was one window in all that night sky. I'm gonna do some more night sky in the back here. Okay, night sky on the patio. And some happy trees. We have some happy little trees. Lives right out there. Do a little Bob Ross for you. But like bad sketchy Bob Ross who does not paint with nice oil colors. Anyway, um, and let's just say all of these windows are blacked out. This is the opposite sort of thing. Everything is dark except for that one space. And then I would for this, honestly, to make this, uh, to kill out that extra contrast, I would wanna put everything here. In that darker space. So um, this is just a simple example. And I just realized right now that I cut off half of that. So you never got to see the little patio a part of the trees, so sad. Um, this, however, is my example of contrast, and you could see, because full disclosure, I did the drawing part first for this video. You can actually kind of see how I messed that up on uh, part of the drawing, but I'll save that for what you're about to see right now. Do as I say, not as I do. So getting into this particular piece, it's uh, kind of a, a weird one. Um, this idea that I had uh, to kind of make fun of some of the emotions I've been feeling lately, just overwhelmed with my work, with uh, the situation in the world, with my family and friends. Um, I just had a thought in my head that if instead of being a school teacher right now, I was the owner of a store called The Feeling Store, it would be closed for renovation. And that's kind of where this whole thing came from. Um, this idea of an entire store called the feeling store and um, the fact that it's closed. So um, I did a lot of research on storefronts in like New York City. Uh, I've never been there before, but that's kind of like one of the charms of, of, of that city is just the, um, the interesting old shops and buildings that have a history to them. So I tried to do something somewhat like that. Um, hopefully I, I did something that, that um, kind of honors that idea, but uh, we'll see. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Uh, using this pen, it, it is honestly a joy to use. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are dedicated hardcore fountain pen fans that wouldn't touch a roller ball if your life depended on it, but um, I don't know, for art, this really reminds me of like when I was using uh, those Pigma Micron pens, which I don't really like to use anymore because of the, uh, the environmental impact of those pens when they go dry, which they often do, and you gotta throw the whole pen out. But here is a pen with a metal tip, meaning that it should last a bit longer than those Microns, and uh, completely refillable using a Pilot Con 40 or a Pilot cartridge that you just uh, use a blunt needle syringe and, and fill more ink into. Super cool. Um, very impressed by what this pen can do. Uh, very consistent, uh, decently fine lines, not overly fine, just enough for um, some nice details. So um, yeah. Uh, this didn't take me very long to draw either. So I kind of felt like uh, the ink itself, this is pilot, standard pilot ink, dried pretty quickly, which is sometimes an issue for me as a as a left-handed person, I'm always smudging my own drawings. I caught myself doing it today even. So yeah, um, I got my, I got a little bit overexposed here, but I fixed it, there we go. 
Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this uh, little silly pun that I spent hours working on just because uh, life is tough sometimes, but you got to laugh at it. Um, I hope everyone's doing well and healthy. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you're in the market for a, a cheap rollerball pen that's refillable and kind of lives in that fountain pen, um, what's the word, that fountain pen economy, just a little bit, I recommend this one. It uh, was a lot of fun to work with. All right, that's it. So final thoughts on the Pilot TechPoint V5. I really like it. I didn't think I would like it that much. I mostly bought it because it was pretty cheap and I thought it couldn't hurt. And I thought I recognized the Pilot cartridge and in fact, I was correct. Um, the fact that it fits the uh, Pilot uh, Con 40 cartridge uh, converter, excuse me, is a definite plus. It makes fine, consistent lines. Um, and it feels very sturdy for its price. It's uh, hard to beat. So um, yeah, a little bit off the beaten path for someone like me who really likes fountain pens, but I, I think it's a value at what uh, the cost is and what you get for it. I'm actually very happy with this pen and I've been using it a lot. Um, this is the end of my video and I'm so glad that you were sticking around and watching this with me. I hope you're feeling good. Um, I hope the feelings store stays open for you uh, in the future. Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, um, thanks for being you.